Hello, hello everybody. So here we are again on our um, Facebook Live on Saturday. Um, I hope you have all had a um, fantastic week uh, and you're all keeping safe and looking after yourself. It's, um, we're just going to sort of wait until we have a few people, see if anyone's going to join us. It's such a lovely day today. We might not have anybody joining us, so <laughs> we'll just hang on for a bit and see if anybody comes along. Just for a couple of seconds and, uh, and then I'm going to tell you about what we've been doing this week. I think everybody's out in the garden, actually. It's a I think nice they day. are. Yeah. I want to be in the garden. Yeah, we'd quite like to be in the garden. We were just saying, it's a bit warm in here. <laughs> oh, I think Wendy's here. Had to open the door. Is Wendy there? I think so. Oh, we've got a few coming on now. Oh, lovely. Oh, look, I can see. Yes, it's now saying that I'm live. Hi. <laughs> it's saying that I'm live on my screen here. That's good. I can see. Ooh. Oh, goodness, I can see me on big screen here. I don't know if I want to see myself on big screen. <laughs> Oh, Wendy says hi, Claire. Hi, hi, Wendy. Let me just. Oh, let me just. See oh, if she's I can... watching, so we have to wait. Oh, hi, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to quickly get back to my other screen because I've gone onto a really large screen that looks quite scary. <laughs> anyway, hello, everybody. Hope you've all had a fantastic week. Um, we've been really busy. You're probably wondering why I'm sitting here in a cocktail dress. Well, today is Virtual Frocktails Day. Um, virtual Frocktails uh, is um, in celebration of all the people who were supposed to be having their Frocktails events today. Um, there were people in Scotland, in Belfast, Northern Ireland and in Sydney who'd all planned to have um, Frocktails events today and um, we know very well what that's like to have to cancel an event. It's very disappointing and very sad. So today is Virtual Frocktails Day and the idea is that we all um, dress up no excuse to let standard slip. We all dress up in our cocktail dresses and um, raise a glass to everybody who's celebrating virtual frocktails around the world. So if you are dressed up, I hope everyone's going to join us today, even Louise, who I know is in her PJs. Um, uh, dress up later on, take a picture of yourself in your in your finery with a glass and tag us, tag uh, Claire's Threads, um, at Claire's Threads or hashtag the Midhurst Sewing Room, but also include that hashtag virtual frocktails so people all around the world can... Um, can see you. Oh, Jane and Sally Camps are here. Oh, hi Jane and Sally. I can see them now. Oh, thank you Sally. I like this. Any excuse to wear this dress. <laughs> Let me just see what people are saying. Jean Taylor says, hi Claire, good oh, to see you. Oh, hi Jean, nice to see you too. Hi Jean. Um, yeah, <laughs> Wendy says if she'd been dressing up, she would have worn this dress as well. So let me tell you a little bit about this dress. I love this dress. Um, I hope it's lovely to make, it's lovely to wear. I always feel great when I wear this dress. Uh, and I made this dress a few years ago for, um, thank you Louise, hope you'll be dressing up later. Um, I made this dress a few years ago when the uh, Beau Buttrick McCall's won a, uh, ran a um, cocktail event that was running at the Knitting and Stitching Shows and I teach at the Knitting and Stitching Shows. So with my lovely friend Sue Cotton, I don't think Sue's joined us yet, um, but my lovely friend Sue Cotton, um, we both decided to make cocktail dresses and on the day of the event we wore our dresses all day to teach all the workshops. It was of that somewhere so maybe we'll post that, maybe we'll post that later so you can see it. Hi Karen, nice to see you. Um, yeah it was really good fun and uh, don't have the opportunity to dress up very often so any excuse to wear it. <laughs> so um, a little bit about this dress. Um, uh, I'm, this dress is made from Silk Jupion and uh, if any of you have, have worked with Silk Jupion you'll know it's a nightmare to work with. It's really hard work to work with. Um, beautiful but hard work. I've got a piece here on the table so I'm going to show it to you. This is Silk Jupion. Um, it crushes like paper. It really creases up and it frays. As you can see it's fraying like mad. And um, this dress that I'm wearing, uh, I've very rarely had to iron it. Since I, since I made it, I've had to iron it maybe one or two times. In fact, um, <laughs> I knew you'd be still in your PJs, Louise. <laughs> you can still take a picture with a gin. Yeah, I think dressing up in PJs with a gin. Uh, I'm hoping Pat's going to join us because I know that Pat's got a really nice pair of silk PJs, so she could wear those. Specifically for champagne drinking. <laughs> yeah, champagne drinking pyjamas. Um, uh, yeah, so Silk Dupion, as I said, this is a lovely fabric that I got from Victoria at Blue Square Fabrics. And in fact, this dress um, was on the Taylor's dummy at the sewing room in Midhurst. Um, and I didn't have it here and I wasn't planning to go to Midhurst. So the lovely Victoria from Bloomsbury Square posted it to me um, and it arrived this morning. And I got it out of the packet and put it straight on. 
and you can see that it's really not. I shall stand up so you can see it. Okay. Do a twelve. Do a twelve. Do you want to see a twelve? I've got Amy's. Amy's heckling me from the back. There mm -hmm. we go. There's my dress. So you can see it's hardly any creases on it. I very rarely have to iron it. Hold on. I can sit down. I'm going to fall off my stool. Hold on a sec. <laughs> um. Oh, hi Suzanne from hi, Suzanne. Guernsey. Hi to Sunny Guernsey. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, Sally's made this dress. Sally made this dress to wear to her to um, Angela's daughter's wedding. It's such a great dress, really flattering. It's a Vogue pattern for anyone who's asking. Um, yeah, so this, as I said, I, this made this dress is made in this fabric, but the reason it doesn't crease is because I underlined it in silk organza. Silk organza. Silk organza. Uh, um, is a fantastic fabric for underlining. For those of you who don't know what underlining is, I thought I'd just run through that this morning, just as a little tip. Um, one of my top tips. Um, underlining is where you add a, a second piece of fabric to your main fabric uh, to change the properties of it. Um, so you could be doing it to give body to your fabric, you could be um, uh, stopping transparency, stopping stretching or seating, or to stop creasing like with this uh, silk dupion and the idea is that you cut out your main fabric and your underlining fabric from the same pattern piece and then you tack them together and once you tack them together you make the garment up as one so I do a whole class on this <laughs> it's one of my one of my sample portfolio classes that I do on a Monday afternoon in Midhurst and there are some running later in the year uh, but also we're hoping to to film it maybe for one of our online classes as well so it's um, advanced dressmaking and we do lots of samples of different underlinings and what, what works with different fabrics. But for Silk Dupion, to stop creasing, as I said, I used um, Silk Organza. Um, so I'm just looking to see who's saying there, who's saying hello. I can see Louise and Sally. Suzanne, it's great. And there's a bit of a delay today, um, as usual. Is, what's the map looking like, Ains? Is it looking a bit pixelated? Hmm. Well, I don't think we can tell from our side. Oh, okay. Let me know if the, because I know last week when I was doing the pattern matching, the map that I'm using was sort of a bit sort of blurry. So, um, oh no, Wendy's saying the pattern is Vogue 1182. Oh, go. thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> I've forgotten the number. <laughs> um, uh, yes, if the map's looking a bit pixelated, let me know. Um, I did mean to cover the table in white fabric, but running around getting ready for frock tails today, I forgot to do that. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to cut out my silk dupion and my silk organza from the same pattern piece and then tack them together. And once you tack them together, you would then um, make up your garment as you would normally. Um, so all the pieces I've done, the, the collar pieces, the front and the back. Um, Sally says it's a bit pixelated. Is the mat a bit pixelated? Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. The lap the mat looks a bit crazy, said. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's the same all over. It's a bit blurry, but we can see perfectly well. Let me put a bit of paper underneath it. There's some white fabric somewhere. It's all hanging up behind us, that's why we haven't got any anywhere else. I think that would be a bit insane to try and do that. Try now. and do that now. I'll put it onto a piece of white paper just just to help a little bit. Oh now I've lost my tacking thread. Do you want me to come in? Yeah, yeah, Amy, Amy's being my, um, <laughs> well, my, my lovely cameraman here. Um, I hope that helps you put it on the white paper. Jane is saying uh, that underlining is her favourite thing to do. <laughs> I know it is, Jane, because I always make you tack it. Um, oh, Angela's here. Oh, hi, Angela. <laughs> I'm glad Sally's, Sally's showing you how to, to join us. That's great. It's so nice to see you. Louise is saying mm -hmm. hello to you, Amy, as well. Hi. Amy's mm -hmm. going to come in in a minute. We'll, we'll have a little chat with Ains as well, as you know. So nice to see you, Angela. I hope you're well. So when I'm underlining, I would have the fa fabric on top of the uh, underlining. Actually, I normally do it the other way around, but anyway, just for today, I'll show you this way. Everyone's saying hello to Angela now, that's really nice. <laughs> and then I would just tack it in place all the way around. Uh, and Jane is very familiar with this because Jane's done lots of garments that are underlined for various different reasons. Well, you can see here it sounds like paper, doesn't it, when I'm sewing. Um, I've done that awful thing of making my thread too long because I wanted to be prepared this morning. Make that a bit shorter. So the idea is that you tack around the fabric just inside the seam allowance. Oh, the, no, the mat is too much. It's making it a bit difficult to watch. Even with the paper underneath? Yeah, the whole mat. 
Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, while I'm doing this, Amy's going to grab a piece of white fabric. Um, I'm just going to show yeah, Amy's going to grab a bit of white fabric and then we'll stick that on the table underneath where I'm where I'm stitching. You might need to fold that in half if it's muslin. Yeah. It's a great mat for the filming, but it just seems to be really bad for the um, for the lives. So I don't want you all getting headaches while you're watching me. That's my that's my job. In fact, I've had a real headache this week. I bumped my head on the car door, so that's. Uh, hope you can't see it. I've put loads of makeup on it, so you can't see. So I'm just going to tack this around, and you just tack it around just inside the seam allowance. Um, and do each each side of your fabric separately because every time you sew a seam you'll want to pull out your tacking but once you've tacked it then you can just make up your garment um, as you would normally so just my, my tacking thread is very knotty today there we go it's because i had it far too long that's what the problem is there <laughs> Karen's right. saying the mat looks like a sea. You might need to move some I'm going to have to move my tea. Hold on two secs. I'm just going to move some things so that Amy can slide, some, slide the fabric underneath. This is muslin, so it probably might be worse. <laughs> yeah, it might be worse. It might be worse. Let me know if that's better. Now I've lost all my things. Hmm? Right, is that better? I'll wait until I can see some comments. I'll put my mouse down somewhere. Oh, Jan is watching. Hi, Jan. Hi, Jan. Nice to see you. Further away with the camera is better. Okay. Okay, we'll and stay here. Thank you. We'll stay there. Is it better with the muslin? Let me know if that if it's better with the white on the table. Does it look better from your end then? Yeah, but it doesn't go fuzzy from my end. It just looks oh. like normal. If one's saying the camera further away is better. When do you say the camera further away is better? There we go. Let me get back to what I'm doing. There we go. So you would just tack it all the way round and then you make it up as it is. And that would, um, yeah, everyone's saying that's much better. <laughs> That's good. We'll remember to do that before we start filming next week. We just <laughs> completely forgot with all the frocktails stuff going on. <laughs> so as you can see, the other thing with um, Silk Jupiter is it frays like mad. So with this garment, with every, every piece that I did, I did overlock the edges before I made it up. So I did the underlining and then I made it up. Um, so underlining is great to do. I do it with silk with um, silk jupion. When I'm making coats, I would underline in cotton lawn. There's lots of reasons for um, Sally saying much better as well. Yeah, so it's good. Hooray! Hooray, we solved it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be completely confused now because I had all my stuff laid out in the right order and I've had to move it. But anyway, you'll have to bear with me. <laughs> so... That's a little bit about underlining. Um, yeah, Sally's saying she likes to underline things. It's great. It makes all the difference. Um, I, will, I will do a little video on different types of underlining um, a bit later on as well. Um, and uh, as I say, there are classes uh, you can book online at Midhurst. So what, have, what, I don't know, what, have you been, what you've been sewing this week? What have you all been making? I've seen some lovely pictures of children's garments that have been going up on the Midhurst Sewers page. Everyone's making for their grandchildren, which is really lovely. It's so nice to see what you're all making. So let me know what you're making. Do um, put them on the Midhurst Sewers page or tag me at Claire's Threads, uh, hashtag Midhurst Sewing Room, and then I will get to see them. And let me know you're watching. If you like, like um, the page as well, then I'll know you're there. If my mouse will work on the muslin. It might do. Oh, it does. So I can see who's there. Oh, there's a few people there. That's lovely. <laughs> That's really good. Oh, hang on. I'm just going to move it so I don't see myself. That's much better. So we've been really busy here. We've been doing lots of sewing this week. Um, I wanted to tell you what uh, what we've been making. Uh, I've made, this is my lovely, this is my new um, raw edge coat. Um, I made this for the video that we've made for our, one of our online classes. It's using the Maker's Atelier pattern, the pattern from the book. And the class is available on the website now, um, uh, claire-tyler.com. You can see the class for this one with lots of tips of working with board wool uh, and a few tips of working with leather if you want to make the leather version. Um, 
it's a really a really lovely coat they're lovely fabrics that we've been using are from Bloomsbury Square so Victoria has sent us the fabric um, Louise, Louise hasn't made anything yet I can see that um, uh, because I know she's been working really hard I'm not surprised Louise uh, <laughs> you can do some sewing later, sewing later on um, Wendy is making maternity clothes Yay, congratulations Wendy. not for Wendy this is no. Wendy's, <laughs> Wendy's daughter Sarah <laughs> congratulations to Sarah that's such good news that's really good um, uh, yeah this is a great coat everyone the Maitre Tellier raw edge coat is a great pattern there's one in her book and there's also one uh, an individual pattern that you can make um, Victoria say thank you thank you for Victoria Victoria from Bloomsbury Square Fabrics is watching hi Victoria this is all your lovely fabrics here and thank you so much for sending my dress I got it this morning so put it straight on <laughs> um, so yeah this is um, the raw edge coat one of the videos that's now online underneath you can see um, one of the t-shirts that I made for the um, t-shirt workshop this is for working with stretch fabrics well, Sally is asking where do you get the leather from Oh, the leather. So the leather for the, so you can make this uh, jacket in leather and I get the leather from uh, GH Leathers in London. They're a fantastic company and um, they're really helpful. You can go and visit them, but you can order fabrics online. They've got a shade card of so many colours. It's the Lamb Napper that I like to use. Uh, and for my jacket, my jacket's outside, otherwise I'd get it in for you. Is it, it's not on there, is it? No, it's on the stairs. Um, my uh, leather jacket, I use two skins for my leather jacket, um, but... They're really helpful. You can you can buy if you buy more than you need. So if you bought three and only used two, uh, you can send it. Um, you can send the one back that you haven't used. So GH Leathers are fantastic for that. Um, yeah, it is wonderful news for uh, Wendy's daughter. It's lovely. Um, so the t-shirt underneath. This is a this is using for the t-shirt workshop that's also online now. Um, we've used the uh, Lark t-shirt pattern from grain line and it's got uh, three or four different necklines and i show you all of those in the video so you can choose which neckline you want to work and also lots of tips about working with jersey and working with that pattern and uh hi marilyn nice to see you thank you i know you saw this as the fabric last week didn't you and now it's made into a lovely coat <laughs> Uh, and Suzanne's saying that she's ordered some Lakes Atelier patterns. They are great. I, I'm not sure if she's still posting out. I think she's still posting out some, but um, uh, they are. Um, most, most people are still posting out. Um, the other class we've got available online is the Full Bust Adjustment Workshop. Uh, that is for anybody that needs to do a full bust adjustment. If you've got, basically, if you've got a two inch difference between your high bust and your full bust measurement, you'll get much better fit if you do a full bust adjustment. Uh, and there's a video available online which goes through all of that. Um, talks about um, how to measure yourself, what pattern to buy, uh, and um, also how to move the, um, the bus point to make sure that's in the right place, as well as doing full bus adjustments for um, patterns with uh, no dart or with a side dart or with a princess seam. So you should be able to sort of see, um, oh, hi, Pat. Nice to see you. We are just saying about your lovely um, silk pyjamas, actually, Pat, because I know that this is, this is um, Virtual Frocktails Day, so we're all dressing up and having a drink in celebration of Virtual Frocktails. So uh, silk pyjamas, perfect for that. <laughs> um, Louise has done the full bus adjustment workshop at, at Midhurst, so she knows all about how to do full bus adjustments. But the video is online now, so anyone who needs to do a full bus adjustment, that's a great one. You can get a really good, good fit with a full bus adjustment. What else have we been doing this week? We've been doing not so much this week, uh, even though I bumped my head. We've still been doing, we've been doing uh, lots of uh, filming and videos. Um, on, on the website, oh yes, on the website, I've added a few things. I've added um, a measurement sheet. So I've probably moved, oh, here it is. <laughs> um, a measurement sheet. So this is the measurement sheet that we use in the workshops and the one I use for clients as well for taking a full set of measurements. That's really important to have a full set of measurements when you start your dressmaking, as you know. Uh, and this is all the 25 most important measurements that you need for dressmaking. Uh, so you can download this uh, this free on the website. And I've actually done, we filmed a little video on doing this, where, how to take the measurements and where to take them. And that will be going up on uh, YouTube later this week. So that's the measurement sheet. And the other thing that I've got, I'm just seeing who's saying hello. This is Suzanne. Uh, the other thing that I've done is, I'm just making sure that I haven't missed anything. anything I'm just going to move that out of the way. The other thing I've done is I've uploaded a free pattern for making lace knickers. So lace knickers is a really popular workshop um, when I'm teaching at the shows. And I thought it would be a good fun thing to, to be able to do at home. It's a really quick and easy make. 
Uh, so I thought I'd show you how to do that today while we're chatting. Sally's just asking, how many um, lambskins for the raw edge coat? What's 25 metres, Louise? Measurements. <laughs> oh, 25 measurements. Oh, yeah, there are 25 measurements. Yes, 25 measurements. Uh, well, mm -hmm. so for my, my, my jacket, I, I used two. Um, and that was for the size 3-4 uh, in the Meg's Atelier book. So I used two lamb, um, two lamb napper skins. So I hope that's... Um, I should get my jacket, shouldn't I? But I don't think I can get out the door to get it. Um, so, lace knickers. Let's run through some lace knickers. These are nice and easy. I'm just going to make sure I'm keeping up with all the measurements. On the website, there is a free pattern for you to download. And then we do have lots of the stretch lace in all sorts of different colours. This is one of them. So it comes in different widths. You can get it from six and a half up to nine and a half um, inches wide. So you can make narrow knickers or wide knickers. And the pattern comes in two pieces, like this one here. So all you need to do is fold one part of the pattern over and put it on top of the other one, matching the lines here and then stick it down with some tape. I'm not sure if we've frozen or, but uh, keep watching, bear with me. Please say hello. <laughs> There we go. So you just um, stick the two pattern pieces together and then on the instruction sheet, which is also um, a doubt free download, you can work out which size you need to make and then cut out the pattern for your size. So this is the size I've cut one out. Of course, I've done lots of things earlier here. I'm getting very good at this, doing one earlier. So this is the pattern here. What you then do, <laughs> Is that Victoria just letting us know it's working? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Victoria. <laughs> I hope things are okay up there. I really miss coming up. Everyone's to just watching. That's why they're being oh. quiet. <laughs> I'm still moving. Oh, good. Thanks, Louise. <laughs> That's trouble when I do demos. Everyone stops talking. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Really miss coming up to Midhurst and seeing you and Tilly. Hope you're all okay up there. I think we'll probably go up one day next week because we still we're still fulfilling all the, any online orders. So if you need any haberdashery um, or anything like that, just um, let us know and we can fulfill. We have bought quite a lot home, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Our living our dining room is looking a bit like a haberdashery shop, but there's always things that we've forgotten. Um, <laughs> I have watched Blue Peter. That's how I've done. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. Here's yeah, one I prepared here's one earlier. I made earlier. <laughs> And this is my sticky back plastic. <laughs> That's gone straight over Amy's head. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> That's like making Tracy Island. We're making lace knickers. So fold your fabric, fold your lace in half and then fold it in half again. So for the um, sizes, from the extra small to large, you just need one and a half metres. And for the... Um, extra large above you need two meters and then you just place your pattern on the lace this is a double folded end so the two folds are here and the fold and the cut edge are here <laughs> victoria's saying that her partner's just come in <laughs> to watch see her watching a video on making lace knickers <laughs> so i'm going to pin the pattern on so make sure the long edge of the pattern is against the edge of the lace and don't worry if your pattern doesn't come all the way to the edge of the lace here. That's just to allow you for, for using wider lace or thinner lace. And then you just pin it on and cut out. I'm not going to cut out because I'm actually probably pinning this to the muslin on the table now. <laughs> so that's pinned on. And then you'll just take your scissors and cut that out. And once that's cut out, you will have two pieces that look like this. I'm just going to move my needle. I shouldn't put my needle away. Let me get it out of the way. Keep catching it. Yeah. So when you're cutting out, the main thing to remember is that you don't cut along the top. So if I just bring that one back in again so you can see. So you're just going to cut up here and then around the curve and straight up. Don't cut 
the border off at each end because that's what we need that for, for, the, um, for the edging of our knickers. So when you open it, take the pattern off and... and um, Louise uh, is asking, can you use normal pins on the lace? Yeah, absolutely. Just normal glass headed pins, absolutely fine. Just pin them together. If I turn this over, you'll see I pinned pin them together. So once you've got your two pieces of fabric, put them right sides together and pin them around the curve here. Uh, and that is, yes, you can use just normal pins, absolutely fine. Even for stretch lace, it's absolutely fine. Pin around the curve, and then we're going to stitch it on the sewing machine. You can do it on the overlocker, but I prefer the sewing machine for this. I think it's a bit stronger. And the stitch you would use on my machine uh, is number 11. I don't know if Amy can zoom in on that. It's number 11. Can you see that? It's the overlock mm -hmm. stitch or over edge stitch. Some, some of the is it's number 12. Can you see me on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's 11 or 12. So that's the stitch you want to use. Um, and you're going to use a foot called an over edge foot. Uh, the Jeremy one's got a little brush on it. Can you see that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically this foot allows you to stitch right on the edge of your fabric uh, without it um, all rucking up. If you haven't got an over edge foot, you can still make these, but just stitch in away from the edge a little bit and then you can trim off afterwards. But this foot means you can stitch right on the edge of your fabric. So I'm just going to put this foot on the machine. I'm actually going to do a little bit of sewing today. And... Put the foot on the machine and I'm going to stitch, select stitch number, I have to keep looking because it's different from my machine that I use, number 11. Oh, Amy's doing all fancy, all fancy manoeuvres over there. I don't know how fancy we're going to get right now <laughs> <laughs> without it being a complete catastrophe. An, an expert cameraman. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> doing it. <laughs> Very jolty. Whoa, see. <laughs> <laughs> don't drop the phone. <laughs> So when you're sewing with stretch, um, the, the important thing to remember is that sewing machines really like to eat stretch fabrics. They love it. So the two things to remember, one is to start at least half a centimetre in from the edge and hold on to your threads. Never do a reverse on, thre on stretch fabrics either. <laughs> Never do. When, um, Louise is laughing now. I'm sure she's laughing at your Pat, are you standing on a chair? Um, <laughs> no, I have um, a tripod, yeah. but... <laughs> It's a little bit temperamental. Yeah, it's a bit of an obstacle course. Here, it's yeah. An, yeah, it's a small room. <laughs> so we're starting half a centimetre in. Hold on to your threads for the first couple of stitches. Don't do a reverse. I don't want to give the machine any opportunity to eat the fabric. <laughs> Thanks, Victoria. <laughs> very fancy, fancy work. She's very fancy. Wait till you see our videos. <laughs> yeah, it's much better in the actual professional videos. <laughs> Although my dress is now stuck under the tripod. Yeah, wait till you see Amy's dress. She's going to come in a minute. <laughs> so I've got the edge of the foot, that's the metal part of the foot, is right on the edge of the fabric. And that just allows you to stitch. Let me get my arms out of the way. Right on the edge. And then just take it slowly. And stitch around the curve. Everyone's loving your camera work. Oh, uh, thanks, ladies. I'll get better, I promise. <laughs> oh, and thank you to Victoria for the loan of a tripod as well. Oh, yes, thanks, yeah, Victoria. Thanks, it's Victoria. very helpful having two tripods. Yes. It's very, you know, it's hypnotic, isn't it, watching a sewing machine sewing? <laughs> Get that last pin out and just make sure my edges are together. Louise said, the videos are great, really useful and enjoyable to watch, even if you don't do any sewing. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> you need to finish your T-shirt, Louise. When you get to the end, just stop, needle up. And the, this machine will cut the thread for me, so I can just cut the thread. And then take your work off towards the back as well, because the threads come off the back of that foot. So, I'm just going to have a look. Ames, hmm. my bobbin ran out. 
<laughs> Bobby, that by machine, please. This one is my machine. Hold the line. My dress is stuck on the tripod. <laughs> Wait. Oh god. So, Wearing an evening gown around the house is not easy. I was all prepared, obviously, honestly. I was watching a video recently where um, somebody's bobbing my out and I thought, no, I wouldn't do that. But I had my, my other machine all threaded up and forgot to check this one. So, <laughs> there we go. Luckily, this one I made earlier. Did it run out the entire way? No, just oh. the last bit. Just oh. the last bit. So I'm just going to do that last bit. We all know that feeling, don't we? Bobbing right It is out. a kid moment, but you remember, you know, I, I remember I realised I, I stayed very calm. <laughs> I don't think Kim's ever going to live that down. It is now known as the Kim moment. Luckily, I have a, ha a, a very um, beautiful assistant helping me today. <laughs> well, Rita's going to work on her Where are you going? neckband. Hi, oh hi, Ginny. <laughs> oh, so Julie saw the ladies at the Harrogate workshop who were, who were making the knickers. <laughs> bias binding. So the continuous bias binding. Oh, Amy, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Actually, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me just do these knickers. Oh. I haven't got a bin here now either. So I've sewn around both sides. That was quick, wasn't it? I've sewn around both sides um, on my um, with my overlock stitch. That little bit where I started half a centimetre in at the beginning, I'm just going to go back the other way and stitch that last bit just so that it's stitched right to the end. There we go. So that's stitched around the curves on both sides. There we go. Once you've stitched the, the curve on both sides, you open up your fabric here and bring the two short ends together. And that will be your knickers. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch these, this short end together with the same stitch. I'm just going to pin those together. I'm going to do one seam one way and one the other. Just pin those together and then I'm going to stitch the short end. Again, hold on to your threads and start half a centimetre in from the edge. Turn it round and do that little half centimetre from the other direction. Just to hold it in place. Okay. So, that's my lace knickers. Now the other thing you need when you're making lace, when you're making your knickers, it's a gusset. On the pattern, there's a little pattern for a gusset. It's our favourite word here. <laughs> Did you hear any giggle? I hate, <laughs> I hate that word so much. I've lost my big scissors now because I've tied it. Oh, hang on, they're on the ironing board. One minute. Oh, okay. There we go. So it's a pattern piece with a gusset, and um, it's also a piece of cotton. You just need a piece of cotton jersey for that. So. Uh, just cut out so all the um, off cuts from your t-shirts you can make into gussets. <laughs> can we stop saying it now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many times you can say gusset in this face. <laughs> <laughs> Once it's already too many. <laughs> I did this workshop um, this workshop on radio once. <laughs> I did it. I was teaching at the show in Dublin and the local radio station asked if I would 
if someone would go and uh, do, a do a demonstration with their DJ. Uh, so I took my kit along and my sewing machine and we made lace knickers on the radio. And then, um, uh, Louise Doolan, why were you using gussets at the British Library? I'm assuming there's another, yeah, so another, another, there's another, another envelope, meaning. There is. Aren't, aren't envelopes with the, with the bottom bit that are called gussets as well, I think. <laughs> Anyway, the DJ on um, the Dublin radio station was, it was a man, <laughs> but I was teaching to make lace knickers on the radio, and uh, yeah, he thought the word gusset was very funny. Oh, they're the plastic pouches for book tickets. Yes, you see. Who knew? Yes. Always learning. <laughs> Always learning when you're here on <laughs> Facebook Live. It's not just about sewing. There's always something else to learn when you're in the sewing room, even when we're on a virtual sewing room. So I'm pinning the gusset over the four seams there and I'm going to change the stitch to the triple zigzag stitch. <laughs> okay, Louise's funny librarian terminology is coming out now. I know. What's, What's snake? a snake? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but Tora's saying is the... Is the <laughs> When, oh, it's Jilly saying when you hear about gussets on, on envelopes, it always makes her laugh. I think it's just one of those words, isn't it, that makes it's her laugh? It's a funny word. Yeah. I don't know if the um, I don't know if the recording is still available, actually, Victoria. I'll, I'll see if I can find it and uh, put a link to it. But it was a couple of years ago now, but it was quite funny. It was quite funny. Um, so for sewing the gusset on, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it, sorry. <laughs> sewing the gusset on, we're going to use the triple zigzag stitch, which on this machine is number eight. It's the one that does three stitches up and three stitches down. So it is the lingerie stitch. We use it in bra making and uh, all sorts of things like that. So I'm going to take this foot off the machine and put my normal zigzag foot back on. And, and I'm going to select stitch number eight. Are you doing fancy camera work? Well, no. Can you stop <laughs> saying that? Because it's really not fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to stitch down the long sides of each, a long side on each side of the gusset, not the short sides. You don't need to sew it um, along there as well. Cotton jelly doesn't fray, uh, and it just distorts the knickers if you stitch across there as well. So I just stitch down each long side um, using that stitch number eight. And remember, uh, no reverse, and start about half a centimetre from the edge. So that naughty sewing machine can't eat your fabric. Hold on to your threads. Probably if I was making these, I would change one of the, the top thread for white, but uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'll keep it in the contrasting fabric, uh, contrasting thread, sorry. So don't do reverse when you get to the end. I'm gonna, um, not cut the threads. I want to leave a long enough tail. So you need to tie. You want me to tie uh, ends on that piece. I've just noticed that one of my bits is not sewn there, so I'm just going to sew that quickly. Missed a bit when I came in the other side. Excuse me while I just fix the hole in my knickers. <laughs> Can't have that. I'm just going to <laughs> Louise is double laughing but I'm going to humour now. <laughs> I think it's the hole in your knickers. Oh, the hole in my knickers, actually, yes. <laughs> yeah, we can't have hole in knickers. The last thing we need. So I'm just going to go back to stitch number eight and stitch down the other side. Making sure I start a little bit in from the edge and hold on to my threads. long enough tail to be able to tie knots. There we go. Oh. Right. 
just coming so back. So Sally in. is saying uh, the best thing that she picked up from me last week was the gadget for keeping threaded needles in. Um, I sewed the whole of my maxi skirt by hand and it was invaluable. Yeah, that was the uh, needle keeper that Sally's talking about who you um, saw this last week. So uh, it's for storing your threaded needles in. So if you're working, if you're doing a lot of hand stitching, um, you can thread your needles up. So this is a this one's got tacky thread on it. So you just put your needle in. Oh, Barbara's here. She's oh, saying hi, you Barbara. look very glamorous. Thank you. It's virtual frock tails day, Barbara. So we're having we're dressing up today for virtual frock tails. And you just wind that up, and that keeps your needle, your threaded needles, all nice and tidy, so you don't have that row of needles on your sofa. I, I know we all do it or in your lapel. I know Wendy does that. Don't you, Wendy? <laughs> uh, yeah, so then when you need your thread, you just grab hold of the needle and pull it out. So it's a really handy little gadget. It's made by Clover. We have it on the website. I think we've still got some in stock. Oh, Wendy's found a picture of herself wearing the dress that I'm wearing. You have to post that on Midhurst Stowers, Wendy. Let's have a look at that. Hmm. There we go. Where is the frock tail site? You just um, post the picture and then put hashtag virtual frock tails. And then if you want to see what everyone else is wearing, if you go into Instagram and in the search, put hashtag virtual frock tails, you'll be able to see what everybody else is wearing today. From all around the world. <laughs> Still talking about libraries. Oh, I was talking about libraries. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's my knickers. I will tidy those ends up later. We'll do with some new knickers, that's quite handy. That's um, a pair of lacy knickers. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like that. too much information. Too much information about lace knickers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what else are we supposed to do on lockdown? Um, so they're great, really quick and easy to make. I've got all the lace available on my website and obviously the pattern's available as a free download. And for every piece of um, stretch lace that you buy, you'll get a free piece of fabric to make your gussets. Can we say that anymore? <laughs> I know it's uh, Amy's favourite word. Um, and uh, so anyway, I thought you'd like to see Amy now. Come on, Amy, why don't you come in and say hello? Okay. Can you make, yeah, yeah, thanks. I thought I'd bring so, you a drink because it's... it's oh, careful. Oh. Careful. Good come on. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Hello. <laughs> So Amy's come to say hello as well. I don't know if I can see where we are on the screen, actually, so you can see. I can't see you yet. Oh, I'm not in there yet. Not in the shop yet. There's a slight delay. Yeah. Um, oh, no. So, Julie, you haven't got your cocktail gear on for gardening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might. I might just keep this on all day I now. think so. I don't, I don't see why we should let stand a slip just because, yeah. we're, you know, we're at home. No, no, not at all. I quite well, like it. It was quite funny. Just before we went live... Some, a delivery came to the door and I completely forgot that I was dressed like this <laughs> and just opened the door. I got uh, some funny looks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So just talk, talk about your dress. So what this you dress, this is a Vogue pattern, which uh, did the back. Well, you need to see the back. That's the back of my dress. Um, and I made or, this about four years ago, mm. back when I had a corporate job and got invited to posh do's. Yeah. So <laughs> I haven't had to wear it, haven't had the opportunity to wear it since. You so. had to go up on stage, didn't you? Did you win an award? Yeah, we won an award, yeah. yeah. So I had to go on stage. Mm. So yes, it's had one outing in its lifetime. So I think it does go to go around to the knit and stitch show. So some of you might have seen it on a dummy at a mm. knit and stitch show, but this is what it looks like on. <laughs> oh no, Sally, Sally has oh. noticed, yes, you'll notice that Amy looks a bit different this week. Yes, um, Amy's been busy. the uh, home hairdressing <laughs> is now open for business. <laughs> so yes, I have dyed and cut my hair this week. Um, that was a very long exercise, wasn't it? <laughs> I think so. Um, Suzanne... Oh yeah, the fabric, sorry Victoria, yeah. the fabric, yeah, fabric for also, this dress. Also, from Bloomsbury Square, and yeah. it comes in I think about six colours. And we've made yeah, quite a quite few a things in this sparkly, mm. it's a sparkly jersey, but because it's not silver glitter, it's the same colour as blue glitter, so mm. it's not in your face glitter. Um, Suzanne began using the Sew Organised app for the fabric, 
now realised you have more fabric than you thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think people have been doing that with, I think Sally was saying about doing that with the uh, for her sewing patterns as well. Yeah. And suddenly realising how many sewing patterns you have, so... Yeah. yeah, we're going to do a little demo of the Sew Organised um, app because Sally Camps had asked for it. Mm. Um, so we've, I've worked out how to film your screen on your phone. Yeah. So new technology. Yeah, yeah. it's all it's yeah. fantastic. We might that do that today. Exciting. Yeah, we yeah. might do that today. While well, we're dressed up. Yeah. Um, oh, so uh, Barbara, what anniversary? Happy anniversary. So you're going to be all dressed up for your anniversary dinner later. That'll be lovely. And Wendy's asking how many years. Are you going to tell us how many years? <laughs> <laughs> Barbara saying you dress a lovely fit. It is Thank a lovely you, Barbara. Fit. Is that one? Did we find that in scuba? This is lined in scuba. Yeah, it's yeah so it's got scuba. its internal um, shapewear. shapewear. Mm. Yeah, so I don't actually need to wear any shapewear, and I can't actually because it's backless. So any shapewear that I use, mm. you can see. Um, so oh yeah, it's all. Oh, Louise is going to sort out um, a post for doing a pattern swap because we did realise. Everyone's been sorting out their stuff, and we were talking about doing a pattern swap. So I think Louise is going to sort something out on the Midhurst Sewers page this week. That'd be great. Yeah, and that'll give us a good excuse to sort out our patterns. I'm a bit scared of that. <laughs> Mine are just done. Yeah, you're a bit that's, crazy. That's not all your. Patterns. That's not all my patterns. No. <laughs> that's the modest amount. Oh, I can't be too many years, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary. Uh, right, Claire, can you send me the link for the fabric that you're using for the midwives, please? Oh, so this is new news this week. Yeah. Um, we have our, our dream team, which mm. mum coordinates. We usually sew for Goodwood events, um, which unfortunately we're not doing right now because the Goodwood events are postponed or yes. cancelled. So we're using our dream team to make scrubs for midwives mm. in local hospitals here. Um, so yeah, do we the have fabric, any more details? Well, the yet? fabric. Um, a lot of I've been. I bought my the fabric from one of my local wholesalers. So I will have quite a lot of the stock next week. But I think some of the wholesalers that I use are now opening up to the public as well. So um, there, for anyone who's making scrubs, you can go to. I think there's um, Oddie's Textiles are one of them. I think if you go to there's a, a lovely lady called Ashley who started. She's a nurse and she started a. Um, uh, of a Facebook page called For the Love of Scrubs uh, and she's coordinating this making scrubs for anyone who needs them and on that Facebook page there are lots of links for there's a link for the pattern there's also a link for uh, where you can get fabric from and um, uh, all the different hospitals that are asking for help as well so people are making scrubs uh, and the bags laundry bags to put the scrubs into and headbands the, the one I was watching this morning, a lot of people making the headbands with buttons on the side, so that if you've got masks with elastic on, I think a lot of nurses are getting problems behind their ears from the elastic. Yeah, it's like chafing. So chafing. Yeah. So you can make headbands that have got a button on, so the mask can go around the button. So there's lots of ideas on for the Love of Scrubs page. Um, so my uh, with, with the Dream Team, we're working for midwives at the uh, Worthing and Chichester hospitals. So. That'll keep us busy this week anyway. But yes, yeah, so I think if you go onto the For Love of Scrubs page, there are some links, but Oddie's Textiles, I know, that's one of the wholesalers that I get my fabric from, and I think they've opened up to the public if you say you're making for um, uh, for the, for the uh, um, and it's NHS. Generally, it's generally just a navy polycotton, isn't it? Yeah, so there's all different so colours, actually. We've been asked to do, for St Richard's we're doing navy, and for Wor no. For, for Worthing we're doing navy and for Sir Richards we're doing royal blue but on that page it will tell you who's asking for, for different things so um, unless you already have been asked by somebody locally. I think it's uh, either a poly cotton, 65% cotton, 35% polyester uh, or 100% cotton, either of those two are fine. Um, when you get your fabric wash it at 60 degrees before you make it up and then you can make it up following the pattern that's online. I think there's a, a print at home pattern or an A0 that you can use. So whichever you want to do, we're going to be sticking our pattern together. I thought it would be fun. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. It is a jigsaw, yeah. We Usually we'd, we'd avoid sticking patterns together, but I'm quite excited about yeah. it. To be yeah, we thought it'd be fun. We might even video it, you never know. We, yeah. might, we might video it and put it up, you know, yeah. so that we can... Uh, do it as a speed up thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Jilly's, yeah. So a bit confused about the material, Jilly. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, if you're, if you're worried about it, 100% cotton. I mean, some hospitals are being really particular about the weight of fabric as well. So, um, but others are just happy to have anything that's going to cover up their normal clothes so they can just take them off and wash them so they're not, you know, not taking any, anything, any germs home. So just double check with whoever you're making for 
what colour and what t what weight of fabric, but a lot of like GP surgeries and, and uh, midwives are just happy to have something that's going to cover them up and something that they can wash on a 60 degree wash. That's the main the main thing. So, um, but as I say, go to the For Love of Scrubs um, uh, Facebook page because there's lots of information there. And uh, yeah, you can always ask if you, we might be able to help, but I think well, most of the information is there. We're not, <clears throat> we're just working alongside them <clears throat> with that. Yeah. Um, so what um, else were you going to talk well, about? Well, I oh, was yes, going what to you tell you what I've been making. I actually did make something this week, so I'm did. just going to, it's not going to go with the dress, but I'll put it on anyway. <laughs> so um, I made this week the Tasuti Berlin jacket. I'm just going to move your drink. Oh, thanks. It's really mm. yummy. Is it? I'm <laughs> Oh, I've got, I've got, mine's alcoholic though. So this is the Tasuti Berlin jacket, which Very is nice. made in boiled wool from Bloomsbury Square. <laughs> and it took me about two hours, I think, didn't it? Or three hours from cutting out. So yeah, it was a really easy make and it's just a nice, it's a different take on a raw edge jacket because it's all these facings that you top stitch on. So if you like top stitching, it's a really nice make because pretty much the entire thing is made with lap seams, top stitching. Mm. And yeah, I really like it. Were interesting instructions, weren't there? Very interesting <laughs> instructions. Yes, it was a uh, challenge. Oh yes, uh, bright and gin. Yeah. <laughs> yes, these are our bright and gin glasses. Mm. Unfortunately, we don't have any Brighton gin, and actually, we I ran out of gin. <laughs> I ran out of gin, so I'm actually drinking a really nice Norwegian vodka that mm. was given to me from a little tilly sit that I did recently. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Hunda. We got the uh, we had Brighton gin, a lovely company. We when we do our sewing retreats, they come and do a talk for us. They're really good fun, um, and they were supposed to be at our retreat which would have been in March earlier this year, but they very, very kindly said that they will come to our one next year. So anyone who's, who's transferred from this year to next year, Brighton, Brighton Gin will be there. Will be there. <laughs> With all their lovely gin. Thank you, Louise. Thanks, Victoria. <laughs> like my jacket. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I really like it. I'm yeah. excited to wear it, but it's now a bit too warm. <laughs> I thought it would be a nice spring jacket, but it's a bit warm right now. Nice. Um, the other exciting news is, I think last week we mentioned we've got a YouTube channel now, Claire Tyler Couture. Um, so if you haven't been over there already, uh, how did you run out of gin? Drank it all, yeah. Suzanne drank. I ran out of wine first, mm. so then had to move on to the gin. Um, now I've had a wine delivery, so I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> majestic. Majestic delivery. Don't like to other, other wine supplies are available, oh. but majestic to deliver. <laughs> majestic deliver. <laughs> So yes, now I'm having a little vodka, mm -hmm. I feel like it's a nice afternoon tipple. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, the YouTube channel um, is live. If you haven't been there yet, head over and search Claire Tyler Couture and subscribe to the channel. And there's a little bell button. If you hit that, you'll get notified every time there are new videos, which I believe today mm -hmm. Alice has uploaded another five videos. Oh, has she? Yeah. That's breaking so, news. So breaking news, <laughs> five new videos on YouTube. So we have continuous bias binding. I know Jilly was asking about yeah, that. Yes, that is YouTube. now on YouTube as a tutorial. We have uh, Hong Kong binding, so you can see what to do and how to use your continuous bias once you've used it. We have uh, pattern, matching. Matching pattern matching is up there. What else did we do? Pulled collar, so to get the perfect uh, point on your collars and cuffs. And there was one more. Machine buttonholes. Oh, that's it. Machine mm -hmm. buttonholes. So mm -hmm. to take the fear out of your machine buttonholes. So they are all now on YouTube, ready for your viewing pleasure. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm always asking how Alice is. Alice is fine, yeah, she's still in the caravan. She quite likes it there, I yeah. think. She could Rather come out now. Yeah. She's allowed. Yeah. But she's, <laughs> she, but she's staying. Yeah. She, she is going to pop around right. for lunch, actually. So. I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so she's still in the caravan, but she quite likes it there. It's a bit chaotic here, I have to say. So, um, yeah. She's, There's no room for that. No. She's, doing lots of, she's doing lots of work. She's doing her own work and she's also doing lots of work for me as well, which is fantastic. It's really good. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> yes. And she loves your hair as well. Thank yeah. you. So, mm -hmm. I think, how long have we been talking for now? Nearly an hour. Nearly, oh, goodness me. Sorry, we've kept you out of the garden for nearly an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. I think we probably need to wrap it up, don't we, really? 
And then we can. We can stay chatting to you all day. <laughs> yeah, <we can. laughs> but, um, yeah, we need to finish our gin. Um, so um, I don't want to keep you from the garden. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do um, check out the website and the YouTube channel uh, and post your pictures on Midhurst Sewers. And we're looking forward to seeing lots of hashtag virtual cocktails later yeah. in support of the Scotland, Belfast and Sydney who are all uh, should have been holding their, bo their, their cocktails events today. Yeah. There's, um, it's really actually quite fun to dress up for no reason. Yeah, it's nice. To it's really like nice. Eyes. Yeah, I think we're yeah. going to stay like this all day. Yeah, yeah you it's might really see, nice. You might see some workshops on YouTube. Just, just standard, <laughs> standard techniques that I've been wearing my, my, my cocktail dress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So go and put your frock on, put some makeup on. Yeah. Make go and stand in the garden, <laughs> have a photo taken with your gym. With your gym. <laughs> hashtag virtual frock tails. Yeah, hashtag virtual frock tails. Yeah. <laughs> thank you everybody and you've got to go and turn I've got the to camera. go and turn the camera yeah thank you mm -hmm. thanks bye see you next week <laughs> bye everybody see you next week have a great week <laughs>